Hey, hey, pals. Welcome to Frame and Fiber. I am Paige Miller, and I'm glad you're here. <sighs> Happy fall. I'm so glad it's fall. You guys know it's the most wonderful time of year. So how are you? I'm coming to you from Frame and Fiber. My shop, which is in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, is a picture framing and yarn shop. I would say if you ever find yourself in the Point Pleasant area to stop on by, but right now my shop is being run by appointments. So if you find yourself in the Point Pleasant area, call and make an appointment. <laughs> so anyway, how are you guys? How have you been? This is episode 56. Did I say that yet? I don't think I did. Episode 56. Oh my goodness. Here we are. I have some things to share with you things that I hope will interest you. Oh, so I guess I'll just fill you in on some things going on with me uh, here at the shop, at home, that kind of stuff. Last Saturday, nope, the Saturday before last Saturday, I taught a class, an in-person class. <laughs> the class that I taught was a beginning brioche class and it was for three, nope, four women who are family members. And they wanted to take a class together. So I guess they originally were going to be going away that weekend on a knitting retreat, which was canceled because of the world we now live in. Uh, but they wanted to still get together and do their retreat. So. Cheryl, who is one of my good customers, reached out and asked if I would be comfortable in allowing them to come here and teach them brioche class. And I figured since they were all relatives and, you know, comfortable being with each other, I was like, my space is big enough to allow four women to sit at my table. It's quite large. So they came in. We all had masks on the whole time. I'm kind of used to the masks now. Like I don't notice that I'm wearing them anymore. So that's kind of good. Yeah, so the girls came in and it was a really nice afternoon. Uh, the pattern that I used to teach them, it's just a basic cowl knitting in the round. It is by the Blue Mouse or the Blue Mouse Knits, one of those. Uh, it's called the Kodiak Cowl, and it's just a simple, basic, no frills brioche. So I thought I'd share with you um, my cowl. I didn't finish it. This is what I knitted <laughs> the couple days before I taught the class, but I love it so much that I'm definitely going to finish it. So this is the cowl, the parts of it, like half of it, it's half done. I used on that side, and then you can see that side. Isn't that pretty? So subtle. I love brioche because you can see, you know, like the bold contrast are really fun, but I actually really love that this is a soft palette. So what yarn am I using? So it's DK weight, and I am using Legacy Fiber Arts. This pink right here is my 2020 colorway. No, this is my 2019 colorway. It is called, oh my gosh, Sea Creature. Nope, Sea Urchin. Sea Urchin. <laughs> So that's Sea Urchin. And this is Legacy Fiber Arts in worn leather. And they look so pretty together. I honestly thought when I put them together that you'd see a difference. Like there'd be more of a contrast in the brioche. But really, let me spread it out so you can see it. It really is subtle. Um. And I think it's because the sea creature, darn it, I say sea creature because 2020 colorway was sea creature. Anyway, 
They both have that like caramelly brown color in them, which really ties them together nicely. Both of these colorways are available in my Etsy shop if you're interested. And this pattern is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's knitted on, I don't have my glasses on, size five. So my Chow Goo 16 inch circular needles. I mean, there's not much to say about it. It's just plain old simple brioche. Do you guys brioche? If you don't brioche, would you be interested in taking a class online? I haven't, I haven't done any online classes, but my friend Denise, who has been doing Denise Earth Tones Girl, she's been doing her No Fear sock knitting classes through Vogue Knitting Live and they've been going great. She says teaching online is way better than she would have thought. So I'm like, well, maybe I should look into doing some of the classes that I normally do online. We'll see. Let me know if you're interested. Or not necessarily interested, but if you have taken an online class in your experience. So anyway, there she is. It was really fun to cast this on for the class because it's super simple, right? Like I, it wasn't something that I was planning on doing. It was just basically, oh, you want me to teach you a class? Okay, sure. So I'll just cast on the project. Well, with these two colorways together and the, just the simple rhythm of the brioche knitting, it's been really lovely to do. In fact, this afternoon when I'm done with this recording, I will probably leave the shop and go home and sit on my swing outside, watch some chickens and knit on that. So yeah, that is the brioche knitting that I've been doing. I finished one of my socks. So I have a hoe. I have a half object. Here she is. It's a shorty sock because do I have, yes, let me just show you. My, both of my knitting projects are so, so small that they're both living in the same project bag, which is my coffee bag, fall coffee. This is made for me by Seashore Sharon. So, <coughs> pardon, in here, that's why I was going in here to grab. I think I said this to you last time in my last episode, but if you didn't watch it, I will say it again. This yarn I had shipped off to my friend Kathy to make a sample for the shop. And when she finished the sample, which was the Clark socks, she sent back the rest of the yarn and she only used about 50% of the yarn, maybe a little bit more. She probably used 60%. So I have about 40 grams, 45 grams that, or did I say that right? Yeah, I had 45 grams. Gosh, no wonder I'm running out of yarn. <laughs> That's so dumb. I couldn't figure out why I didn't have enough yarn. But right, because I started out with a very small amount. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted my own thinking. I'm doing shorties because I don't have a lot of this yarn left because Kathy needed a whole other pair of socks with it and hers were regular size socks. So anyway, isn't it pretty? Sorry, I have to keep the sock in the white box, which you guys can't see, but there's a box <laughs> that I've got to keep this in, otherwise I won't focus. So this is the Intersection Sock, Intersections, yes, Sock, by Hey Brownberry, my friend Mars. This pattern is first or originally published in the 52 weeks of socks book uh, published by Lina publishing 52 weeks of socks so 52 patterns and I cannot explain to you how beautiful this book is if you do not have this book you can either wait until I get it back in stock or <laughs> you can go find it online someplace it is a beautifully presented book it's gorgeous um 
but this pattern is now available for individual sale on Ravelry. I highly recommend it. This is potato chip knitting at its finest. Like, so fun to knit. So I did have to, I only have one. Let's see if I can, yeah. I only have one pattern repeat here. So dumb. One there, I forgot to do the second one. So whatever, one pattern repeat on the back. Um, oh no, two pa yeah, no, one pattern repeat. Anyway, so it's a shorty pair. This pattern should really be a full length because it's so pretty that I feel like all of it will be hidden under shoes. Well, not if I wear my Mary Janes, I guess, but pretty pattern. I absolutely love knitting it. My sock blocker is from the beautiful Patricia P4 Chen. Uh, Knitography Farm. Just go check her out if you would like to purchase a sock blocker made by Patricia. So I also had to do a really short cuff because I ran out of yarn. <laughs> so there you have it. My intersections sock number one. <laughs> I have cast on number two. So hopefully I will have this finished by the next time I talk with you. I hope. That is basically all of the knitting. Every once in a while I pick up the sleeve of my sweater and knit on that. So remember last time I did say that I wanted to start planning my making into my day rather than just kind of leaving it to chance? I've been pretty good with it. I didn't plan every single day. Uh, this week I kind of, you know, fell off the wagon. But last week, I did pretty well. Like every day I had time scheduled to work on a different project. I even had time to work on my leggings that I started back in what, March? <laughs> February maybe? Yeah, so I worked in some weaving. I did my knitting. I made some knitting mats. What else did I make? I could actually pull out my planner and read to you and tell you what I did. So anyway, planning, making into my day has definitely helped. You probably can't tell by what I just showed you, but <laughs> yeah. So I will continue, hopefully, planning in my making time. Uh, my weaving is almost finished. I should really crank that out this week and be done with that. Uh, speaking of, uh, so making, so I did some new knitting mats and they're in photo frames. So I had some novelty fabric left over that I kind of forgot about. So I made a few of these up. These have kitchen gadgets. Speaking of kitchen gadgets, I got a Vitamix. I'm not a big spender. <laughs> like I don't generally like to spend money. So buying the Vitamix was a big deal for me. And I've used it almost every single day since I got it. It's the best. I make nice cream, which is banana, frozen banana based ice cream, chocolate, peanut butter, banana ice cream. Like uh, I also have been making tons of smoothies, tons of tzatziki sauce and pestos and hummuses and any kind of like saucy thing that you can think of. And then this week, that was a Harley Davidson, this week I plan on making some soup. Did you know that the Vitamix cooks the soup? Like it gets so hot that it warms it up? I don't know. We'll see about that. But... Anyway, that's my kitchen gadget. That was also a tangent, and I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so there's one knitting mat. There's way more than these three, but they are new in the shop, so if you're interested, check out my Etsy store, Freeman Fiber NJ. So there's three of them. Those were great gifts, FYI. 
Uh, so those are in the shop. Any other shop news? Oh, I frames. Let me just put a picture here. I finished those this week. Uh, cross stitches. I've been doing a lot of framing of cross stitches. I know I keep saying this, but thank you guys so much for shipping your work to me. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate that you trust me with your work. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. So those are really beautiful. They came out great I'm doing this, but it's probably gone by now. A new shop opened up in Bayhead, which is a town close to my town, right next door to my town. And if you guys aren't familiar with New Jersey towns, our towns are this big. Like I think Bayhead is like a mile square. It's such a tiny little town. And so when I say next to my town, I mean it's probably like, that shop is probably a mile away from my shop. Anyway, Bayhead is the name of the town and the shop is called Bayhead Needlepoint. They just opened, I think in August, Either July or August was their first uh, their grand opening and I have had a bunch of customers come in with the cutest needlepoint and I will be showing them to you probably in the next couple weeks I have a bunch of them on the framing docket so check out my Instagram to see them but yeah if you're local to New Jersey there's a new there's a new needlepoint shop in Bayhead so you can see me and them on the same day all right, so I have a bunch of new magazines in. You can check them out in my Etsy shop. I will, I'll ship them to wherever. The first one I wanna show you just came out September, September 19th, I think was the release date. But, by hand cereal. Can I tell you all of these magazines that I carry at the shop? You know, we call them magazines, they're more like like books. Like I would never say that, oh, like, you know how, I don't know, what's a good magazine to talk about? Like Martha Stewart. Doesn't she have a magazine, Martha Stewart ma Living? Living, right? Isn't that the name of her magazine? Better Homes and Gardens. There's That's one, right? Is that still a magazine? Anyway, they came out monthly and I feel like you just got them and then you toss them. Or you like ripped out a couple recipes and then you toss the rest. But these are so beautiful and they're very... They're themed, so they feel more cohesive, and they're just lovely to look at, and they have great articles. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> so this came in, and there is a pattern in here that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So by hand cereal is making. It's not just knitting and crocheting. There's all kinds of crafty type things in here. I don't know. I can't remember if they give you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Recipes. <laughs> yes, it is heavy on the knitting. I shouldn't say that. There's sewing, there's crafting, but it is based, it's community based, so they go to different areas of the country. This is Northern California, but there's a knitting pattern in here that caught my eye. Golden poppy. It's so pretty and I just feel like this would be a great way to use up some indie dyed yarns because it's a solid held with a variegated indie dyed. It's really pretty. The sleeve detail. Can you see the sleeve detail? Yeah, right there. So pretty. Uh, I thought that was beautiful. There's a dress in here that if Allison lived in New Jersey still, I'd be begging her to make for me. Merchant and Mills double gauze or any lightweight linen or cotton fabric. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. So this is by hand cereal featuring yarn shops in Northern California designers from Northern California and yarn companies in Northern California. So check that out. These are beautiful. 
I love I love the idea of the community based theme of the magazine, which another community based magazine is Nomadic Knits. This is episode, nope, it's issue, issue seven, Michigan. Uh, and again, this is a community based magazine. The patterns are lovely. Okay, here's the Kate Atherley pattern that I was looking at. So there are some fingerless mitts. Kind of along the same lines as my Intersections socks by Mars. You know, just really pretty tonal yarn with some texture. So Nomadic Knits is knitting, whereas by hand is more crafting. So both are beautiful and dreamy. Okay, also in, I've got Pom Pom. This is issue 34, autumn 2020. Okay, I'm all about the texture today. <laughs> Can you really, it's probably not easy to see. So this is called Crossfade by A.L. Leong. It's a beautiful, holy crow, it's gorgeous. Um, I don't really wanna show you the chart, but let me just show you this. That's the shape and that's the texture. It's beautiful cable-y, cable -y? This is a beautiful magazine. And it is guest, I wanna say this right. That's called The Home Issue with Ocean Rose, and it's the guest editor and creative direction of Ocean Rose. Uh, you can find her on Instagram as, shoot, I forget what her Instagram, I'll put it here. Uh, you can see her Instagram account. She has a beautiful account. This particular issue is all about representation. Okay, here it is, writing home a letter from guest editor Ocean Rose. Anyway, I'm not gonna read all this to you, but Please get this. Please get this book. I'm calling them books. <laughs> okay, and then the last but not least is Taproot. This is issue 41 called Extend. So Taproot has knitting and fiber arts in it, but it's also other crafts and recipes. Okay, I'm just gonna show you this and then maybe you'll just wanna read this just for this picture right here. Look at that, oh my gosh. Anyway, Food Farm Family Craft, that's what it's called. Or that's what they, uh, that's what they're all about. Oh my gosh. A cobbler. Yes, please, thank you very much. I'm sorry, I called it a cobbler. That's bread pudding. Anyway, these four are in my Etsy shop as we speak. What's well, not in my Etsy shop as we speak because it's not, released until October 23rd is the new issue of Making Magazine, which is in my store right now and I'm not allowed to sell until the 23rd of August, no, October. But I have thumbed through it already. It's the prettiest magazine. I'm saying that as I hold these beautiful magazines, but making is beautiful. <laughs> Anyway, that was a lot of blather, I think, about magazines that maybe you didn't need to see. I don't know. But if you were curious, I have all those magazines in my shop. I've opened the store for in-store shop, in shopping. Again, like I said before, it is by appointment. But someone had asked me, since I've been doing the picture framing online for everyone, um, and we have meetings on Zoom, if I would consider doing online yarn shopping. So if any of you are interested and wanna be a guinea pig, I mean, sure. I would definitely do um, online appointments with yarn and notions or whatever. So it doesn't have to just be picture framing. I hadn't thought of that until um, someone had reached out and asked me. 
if I was going to be doing that. And that hadn't occurred to me. So thank you. Thank you so much for <laughs> giving me that idea. And I guess finally, the last thing I'll tell you guys about um, is some of the new yarn that I have in the store. Oh, maybe I should grab it, right? Do you want to come with? All right, come on, let's go. I have some new yarn in the shop. I just, I mean, besides new colors of the yarns that I already carry, I added Quince Phoebe to the shop. This is a DK weight extra fine merino, so it is a little bit softer than a typical merino. It's just a little bit squishier, a little bit loftier. I feel like it feels plumper in your hand. I don't know, maybe someone who doesn't pay attention to yarn the way we do would be like, I don't know a difference, but this is their extra fine. It's beautiful. All American wool. Did you guys know that about Quince? It is American wool. It's all grown, spun, and dyed in the United States. Non-superwash. Non-superwash. So I have a bunch of new colors of Phoebe in, which is beautiful. Let me just show you the colors. And then I've got, oh here, let me turn you around again. Sorry guys. So this right here is the newest edition of the Robin of Robin's Roost yarn. These colors right here. I love them so. All right, I love them all. Look at this. Oh, you know that sweater that I was showing you in by hand? Look at this. Perfect. Uh, what else did I want to show you? I got some new Legacy in from here to there. Just a few colors in fingering weight. That's their steel toe. And then I also got it a bunch in DK. So there, there, got the cool palette, the warm palette. That's my sea urchin, right? I keep saying sea urchin. I'm correct, right? Yeah, sea urchin. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then... The only other thing that I wanted to show you, is there only one more thing? I feel like that's a lie. Yeah, Robin's Roost, Legacy DK, and then Legacy um, Sock Sets, which, let me pull a few out. Let me pull these out. Oh gosh, I love them all. Okay, so that right there is Kirk. Isn't it pretty? So sock sets are here. Now, I did have someone ask me the question, do I have to make socks with my sock sets? Or no, they didn't say it like that. The question, it wasn't really a question, it was more of a, well, I don't knit socks, so why would I buy that? I'm like, well, you don't have to knit socks with it. This is a full 100 gram skein of fingering weight yarn, and this is a little mini 20 gram skein of fingering weight yarn. So you don't have to knit socks with it. You can use it for all different projects so yeah that's what I got in stock I just thought I would share that with you the quince is in my uh, Etsy shop and some of the legacy is but like the sock sets are not in my Etsy shop and neither is the Robin's Roost yarn so let me know if you would like to see any maybe we could have a virtual meeting and you can shop online <laughs> yeah what have I been reading this week all right, I haven't been reading books. I've been listening to books. This week, I've been listening to fantasy books. There have been no real life books listening. <laughs> it's all been escapism. I have been listening to Game of Thrones, which this is my first time listening slash reading Game of Thrones, and I've never seen the HBO series, and I will not be watching the HBO series. It'll be way too intense and graphic for me. I don't like graphic. I can handle the fact that things happen and I can watch, like I'm fine with, you know, war movies and fighting and all of that. But when it gets into like a really graphic detail of violence, it's not for me. Also graphic sex, ooh, no, not for me. So Game of Thrones on HBO, not gonna be watching that. However, the book, 
you know, they say that the things happen and there's lots of violence and sex in the books as well, but it's like a sentence or two and then moving on. <laughs> like, so anyway, I'm on book two. So what is that? First book is Game of Thrones. Second book is something of Kings. Game of Thrones. Well, whatever. It's the second book. And I'm really enjoying the books a lot. Way better than I would have thought. And again, I think I was thinking I wasn't going to like them because they seemed too graphic on TV to me. And I don't know why I never got into them when they were released back in the 90s. My stepbrother, Stephen, talks about them all the time. And it's like totally up my alley, like completely up my alley. Please don't tell me anything about Game of Thrones because I don't want anything ruined. Paul Miller has a hard time biting his tongue because he watched the series. Yeah, so that's what I'm reading. I know I'm behind the times. I'm sorry. I'm always behind the times. That's that. I have, oh, I did read. No, strike that. I did read. I read a book by Let Letitia, nope, Latasha Morrison uh, called Being the Bridge. Um, but addressing racism in our culture and approaching it from a gospel, Christ-centered approach. It's faith-based. It was a great book. I really enjoyed reading it. The bummer is it was for a book club and I totally forgot to go to the meeting. This is the second book club that I've tried to be a part of. No, the third book club that I tried to be a part of and I just stink at book clubs. So. I'm going to read books along with book clubs and I'm just not going to commit to going to the meetings because, yeah. Uh, I think that's the only other book that I've been reading. So yeah, I did read a real life book. All right, I guess I'll leave you here because now I'm just prattling on and you're probably gone anyway. No one's made it this far. If you made it this far, <laughs> if you made it this far, <laughs> leave a comment. <laughs> no, for real. Please look forward to my next video next week, um, the one after this. <laughs> uh, it features, it's another picture framing video featuring my friend Joanna uh, and a cross stitch that she made. So you'll get to see us together, the design process from beginning to end. I hope you guys are well. I hope you are making all the things and enjoying all the things. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.